I mean, it didn't make sense for me when the group was announced two, three weeks ago, and it still doesn't make sense for me now. I don't know if my opinion will change after they debut or not. Guess we'll have to see. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So today I'm gonna be reviewing all things Super M. Has my opinion changed? Has it not? All of the tea. I want to preface this by saying that in my unpopular opinions video, I think some of you mistook me saying that I wasn't a fan of the concept, meant that I hate the group or hate the members, and that's absolutely not true. It was just weird for me to see people of different groups together and I know that SM has done a lot of collaborations and temporary groups like SM the Ballad and the Unique Project spelled Y-O-U because they're unique. Get it? <laughs> but this was the first time in I believe K-pop history, don't quote me on that because I'm not a K-pop historian, but this was the first time where they have become a permanent group. Obviously, I don't know how long this will last because Baekhyun, Taemin, and Kai all have upcoming military service, so maybe two, three years max? Then it'll just end up becoming another NCT subunit. This sounds like I'm hating on them again, but it's not. Let me tell you, once I saw them together in that first interview with Super M, my heart just melted and I was like <laughs> Again, still weird for me to see some of the members together only because I'm so used to them as Hubeis and Sunbeis, but I think that the initial shock is gone and now I'm just left with pure adoration for these boys and their amazing chemistry. Thanks, Leader Beck. And also, I've seen a few people say that they don't have good chemistry or it feels unnatural or forced. I don't personally see that, but obviously they are going to be more comfortable with their original groups because they spent years bonding and spending every second of every day with each other rather than just a few months. So for a new group, I mean, they seem pretty friendly. And plus, they're from the same company. In some way, they all kind of grew up around each other. Also, Beckon as leader. <laughs> I mean, at this point, they're just asking for disorganization and chaos. <laughs> also, I kind of hope he didn't shower with all of them to bond, you know, like he did with EXO, because I low-key feel like some of them are still traumatized by that. <laughs> So Capitol Records and SM came together and Capitol Records requested these members, or at least saw these members, making it big and appealing to a Western audience. And that's how the group came to be. My only issue at this point is that them saying that they picked the most popular members kind of gives a bad impression that the other members that weren't chosen aren't good enough or wouldn't be that appealing, which is so not true. I get that it's a part of business and you need marketable people for the region you're trying to make sales in, but I also see situations from an emotional standpoint as well. So my heart just kind of hurts for all the other members. And I'm sure that the members who weren't chosen are obviously super supportive of this group and their members. It just sucks that there are more popular members. I just want all of them to be loved equally. And that goes for any group in any company. But yes, business-wise, it would be a smart decision to get members of three popular groups and combine them so that they would be bringing income and support for three different fandoms and possibly a new one as well. Quick side note, why don't they call their fans the Supremes or Supreme or Supremes if they want to avoid copyright? <laughs> I don't know, I just think that that sort of name would be so cute for them. What did I say folks? When it comes to music and title tracks, it really takes a lot for SM to mess up. And this was not a mess up in the least bit. It was such an amazing song, just full of power, bravado, and charisma. Definitely suits their concept 100%. The loud percussion and stomping effect really adds the grandeur of their whole presence, and it's just so cool. I genuinely can't stop listening to it. It's so good. It's been my most played song since the day that it got released, so that should say something. I've been bobbing to jopping from the start. Bob to the jop as I always say. Okay, I've literally never said that in my entire life. I think while the song is really cool, the name is a bit unfortunate. That word just kind of sounds like something you would make up in elementary school or like grade school. I don't know what you guys call it there, but yeah, not so much a fan of the name. I mean, I looked at the lyrics a little bit and I mean, obviously the lyrics aren't filled with deep, meaningful stuff. Like it's just kind of a hype song essentially it, they're essentially hyping themselves up that's essentially what it is but i just kind of ignore that and just focus more on the beat so i'm pretty happy with it i mean i really like it i don't know if anyone has mentioned this but during the opening when they do the chorus it sounds so similar to 2 p.m's put your hands up am i the only one that thinks that way put your hands up. 
I mean, it obviously helps that they say the same words. I absolutely loved the choreography. I thought it was so interesting and so nice and just so powerful and again, fits their theme perfectly. However, I did notice something really funny or at least it just came to my mind when I was watching it. During a part in the chorus, I swear they look like the scarecrow in Wizard of Oz just flailing their arms and legs around. I didn't get the storyline as much. We got Taemin on the bike being the 10th member of EXO and Doma on my temper promotions. We got Taeyong and Mark driving matching black cars. Hashtag team Mark Young, team Taemark, team Trademark. Then we got Kai. Where were we? Um, right, Kai. Um, yes, so we got um, Kim Kai jumping out of a plane. And I'm not sure about the rest. Ten and Lucas are in a tank, maybe? And Baekhyun? Who knows? Yeah, I didn't really get the whole storyline. Like, are they making their way to the concert in the desert? Are they on some secret heist? Did someone kidnap Jaehyun? What is going on? One of my favorite parts of this video, I gotta say, is the editing. The editing in this video is so nice. Everything has a purpose, nothing is overbearing in any way, and the transitions, the lighting, the cuts, the camera movements worked really well, and they showcased the dance routine so nicely. Some of the CG was a little questionable for me, like when they're dancing in that huge arena. Wasn't a huge fan of that, but overall, a fantastic music video. I feel like SM has been trying to break into the US slash Western market for years now and they essentially want one of their groups to be just like BTS with how in demand they are in the current market. So SM really spent a lot of money for this debut and I'm just gonna say that boy is that obvious. I mean they dropped a ton for this video and album production and just because you spend a lot of money on something doesn't mean it's gonna be good. But I mean it definitely worked for this one for sure. The CG stuff looks really crisp and clean, the outfits, the location, yeah, SM really spent that coin for this. <laughs> now, I'm gonna be completely honest, will there be another group like BTS in the market right now? Probably not. I feel like the international stage and American market only have one spot at a time for a group like this. Similar to how there was Beatlemania in the 60s and then the One Direction craze in the early 2010s, and now I think it's the same thing. I'm sure Super M will be popular and have amazing success, but will they really take over the music industry like BTS has? Probably not. But hey, I'm no Nostradamus. Anything is possible. For I Can't Stand the Rain, it was an alright song, however, I did really like how they added the traditional Chinese and Korean instruments. I thought that was a really cool way to incorporate the old and the new, so definitely bonus points for that. Too Fast is definitely a song to slowly groove to, definitely more of a chill vibe, but I love it. My favorite part has to be the bridge and the breakdown that follows it. I mean, it just sounds so nice. Supercar, I think, is one of those stupid hype songs, if you know what I mean, but I absolutely loved it and it's definitely my favorite b-side off of this album. Out of all the b-sides, I go back and listen to that one the most. So I guess that says something about me. <laughs> no Manners was kind of a miss for me. I get that that was supposed to be the ballad for this album, so I mean, it accomplished its task. It's an okay song, just overall meh for me. I just think in general, this whole album just showcases the image of grandiosity that both companies were going for when it comes to marketing this group, and all I gotta say is job well done. I want to preface this by saying that all of them looked amazing in the video. Outfits, super cool. They're sticking with the whole harness thing, keeping that trend alive, keeping that sort of fantasy alive for all you folks. <laughs> Once again, proving his main vocal status with that high note. I mean, what? <laughs> it was definitely one of his top ones for sure. Not gonna lie though, I kind of felt like besides the bridge and the high note moment, Beckham really took a back seat here. Obviously, I mean, he's still the main vocal, so I mean, he can't really take that much of a back seat, 
but just as a viewer I don't remember seeing him a lot or him being that memorable and obviously this isn't any hate to him because you guys already know my position and my stance with them so I don't even have to explain myself but yeah I just don't remember him being that memorable besides those two parts also if your bias is Baekhyun then you guys are the lucky duckies that get to spot him in every single shot that he's in because of his amazing pink hair <laughs> I mean, what is there left to say about a performance king? It's easy to see why he was born to perform and this video is no exception. I think SM really wanted him to shine so they gave him a lot of parts and screen time but I mean, he fully deserves it. 11, almost 12 years of experience in the industry? Yeah, he knows a thing or two about a thing or two. Woo, where do I start with this boy? I will never get over his man bun look. If they don't bring that man bun back, for another comeback, whether it's an EXO comeback or Super M comeback, I'll probably have to sue SM. Honestly, for me, he was this video's MVP for sure. The dancing, the singing, the visuals, I mean, there wasn't anything that didn't work for him. And I'm not saying that something was wrong with any of the other members, because they were all amazing, but he really just grabs your attention. Shined when he needed to and when he didn't need to either. Even though he didn't have an abundance of lines like Beck or Taemin, he got tons of screen time in my opinion, and again showcased why he's one of the best dancers in the industry. Kim Kai, more like King Kai. Okay, I'll stop now. What I like about Taeyong is that he just makes things look so effortless. Like yeah, that choreo I just did, super easy. Could do that in my sleep. So yeah, for me, Taeyong went in, did his job, did amazing, showcased his abilities, and pieced the scene, you know? <laughs> Okay, I know I'm putting these two together, but I have a reason for this, so hear me out. For me, Ten and Lucas kind of got lost in the video, and I think it was a lot of people's fault. The biggest being SM for not giving them many lines or chances to shine, and my default, then the editor for not having enough content or chances to put them in the video. They gave Lucas mostly ad-libs along with, what, two, three lines? He mostly shined in the glamour shots, and Ten, same thing. They gave him a few lines, but he did shine during his dance break, which I might add was flawless and really showcased him as a powerful performer, which your girl appreciates because he deserves at least that aspect. So, Marky Mark. I mean, we all know exactly what part I'm talking about. One part of me is like a protective mother or older sister, like, sweetie, do not be so R-rated. And then the other side of me is like, oh my god, oh my god. And that's exactly what happened to me during the Jason Derulo, Lay, and NCT 127 collaboration as well. Just me being introduced to this new side of Mark got me all... <laughs> if Kai is first for MVP, then Mark is vice MVP for sure. I mean, it's not hard to see why SM and Capitol Records chose him for this group. I mean, he's just naturally a strong performer, and plus, he's from Canada, has that foreign line swagger. I kind of wish Johnny was in this group too. I think he would have worked so well here, plus he's got such a western appeal to him. I mean, isn't the term tall, dark, and handsome just made for him? Okay, when people say tall, dark, and handsome, the dark sometimes is in reference to skin color and sometimes to hair color. Whenever I use the saying tall, dark, and handsome, I'm always talking about someone who has dark hair, no matter their skin color. I feel like they didn't put Johnny in because he's not known for having a Taemin or a Kai type quality that everyone in Super M does, but it's just because SM doesn't give him the chance to. Therefore, Capitol Records probably didn't see the potential Johnny has as a performer. I mean, that boy has been training since EXO were trainees. You think that boy don't know a thing or two about a thing or two? But honestly, I feel bad for Mark. This is his fourth debut. This boy is so overworked. I mean, all of NCT is. But that's another video for another time. Speaking of another video for another time, that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed the style of video. It was kind of new for me. So let me know all of your opinions down below because I love reading them. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will speak to you guys super duper soon. Bye! Yeah. Bye!